Hello everyone. Today we're going to be looking at linear inequalities with multiplication and division. So every step of the way we should work toward getting the variable upstairs or in the numerator and on its own using opposite or inverse operations. Um, it's generally helpful to work through bed mass backwards when solving um, algebraic equations or inequalities in this case. And so it's helpful to work through bed mass backwards, which would be Sam Deb. So not a absolute rule, but generally helpful. Okay, so looking at a few inequalities today. Fill in each circle with a greater than or less than sign. So remember the Pac-Man, if you like, eats the thing that's larger or if you you might probably find it more helpful, the thing that's further to the right on a number line. So if that's like zero, all the higher positive numbers are great. Uh, the lower negative numbers are not so great. So these, uh, I guess, Pac-Men or Miss Pac-Men prefer the things further to the right. So 30 is further to the right on the number line than 10, right? So we could say like 30 is here and maybe 10 is like there. So prefer to eat the larger thing. Okay, and then, so next step, we still have a 30 and a 10 here, but both are being multiplied by negative two. So let's find out what these values are. 30 times negative two is negative 60, and 10 times negative two is negative 20. Now, which is uh, larger, right? Which is the thing that one of the, like, this would prefer to eat? Would it prefer to eat the negative 60 or the negative 20? So helpful to look at the number line. So negative 20 would go there and negative 60 would go there. So it's further to the left on the number line. So you'd prefer to eat the larger thing, which would be the negative 20. Notice the sign or the direction of this is switched when I multiplied by negative two. So it was toward the left, and now its uh, preference is toward the right. Okay, and moving on, 30 times negative three, negative 90. 10 times negative three is negative 30. So which is further to the right on the number line? It'd be this thing, right? Negative 30 is further to the right. So that's what we would sort of prefer to eat for lack of a better term. Okay. Moving on, 30 times negative four, negative 120, and 10 times negative four, negative 40. So again, the thing further to the right on the number line is that thing. So we would prefer to eat negative 40 than negative 120 if we were sort of a Pac-Man. Okay, so notice when you multiply both sides of an inequality by a negative number, this flips. So originally we were looking at 30 greater than 10. Anytime we multiplied by a negative number, the direction of this inequality flipped. Okay, so let's look at some divisions. So again, originally we're looking at 30 and 10. 30 is greater than 10, right? We prefer to eat the larger thing, the thing further to the right on the number line. So there we're good. Um, okay, what happens if we divide 30 by negative 2? So 30 divided by negative 2 is negative 15, right? Remembering that a positive divided by a negative gives a negative. And 10 divided by negative 2, so 10 divided by 2 is 5. And a positive divided by a negative is a negative, so negative 5. And then, so which one of these is further to the right on the number line? Is it negative 15 or negative five? So again, um, well, I guess I could use the same number line. So negative 15 would be kind of here-ish and the negative five would be further toward the right. So we would prefer to sort of eat that thing instead of that thing. Okay, 30 divided by negative five, 30 divided by five is six. Positive divided by negative is a negative, so negative six. 10 divided by five is two, positive divided by a negative is a negative, so negative two. 
negative 2 is further to the right on the number line. And the last set, 30 divided by 10 is 3. It's negative, positive divided by negative. 10 divided by 10 is 1. Positive divided by negative is 1. So negative 1. And negative 1 is further to the right than negative 3 sort of thing. So there we go. So notice every time I divide both sides of this original inequality, so this is like original, anytime we divide by a negative number, the direction of this flips. So it was originally facing toward the left, and each time we multiplied by a different negative number, it switched toward the right. Okay, so in conclusion there, what can we state. So when you multiply or divide both sides of an inequality by a negative number, what happens to the direction of the inequality? The direction of the inequality flips or if you prefer changes direction. So let's look at a few examples. So if we're going to solve this for x, so remember this doesn't really, like I mean, we need to change our approach if it's an inequality, but it's really not that much different than 4x, negative 4x equals 12, right? So if I wanted to solve this equation for x, what I would do is divide both sides by negative 4, divide negative 4, Negative 4 divided by itself is positive 1. So what remains on the left there is just x. And 12 divided by negative 4 is negative 3. So I should end up with this being x something negative 3. So the one difference here with inequalities is if I divide by a negative number, as we learned up here, if I div divide both sides of an inequality by a negative number, the direction of this flips. So that's the one sort of extra thing that we need to keep track of when we're solving these inequalities. So same kind of deal. Divide both sides by negative 4. So negative 4 divided by itself is just positive 1. So we have x only remaining on the left. And then 12 divided by negative 4 again gives us negative 3. And what direction should this be? Is it okay if I leave it like that? So that would be a poor choice because I've divided by a negative sign. It flips the direction of the inequality. So x should be greater than or equal to negative 3. Now, we can test that with a few choice values. So let's suppose that x was equal to 3 because x is greater than or equal to negative 3. If I let x equal negative 3, that should be a valid solution, right? So let's check. So negative, oh, maybe we'll try that again. Check. If I put negative 3 in for x, so negative 4 times negative 3, that's equal to positive 12. And positive 12 is indeed less than or equal to 12. So that's a true statement. Um, let's pick another thing for x. So x greater than or equal to negative 3. So I already chose something equal to negative 3. So we could try uh, maybe something a little bit larger. Suppose negative 2. Negative 2 is larger than negative 3. Negative 4 times negative 2 is positive 8, which is also less than or equal to 12. All right. So the left side of this turned out to be 8. 8 is less than or equal to 12, so that's good. So this seems to be a valid solution. Okay, so there's a range of values that x could be. It's not just 1, as it is in an, in an equality. So when we're working with algebraic equations, we only get one solution. But when we're working with inequalities, we get a range of solutions. So x, as long as it's greater than or equal to negative 3, then it's a valid solution. Okay, 
Uh, moving on, 10, e, uh, 10 is less than negative 2x. If I want to get x on its own, divide both sides by negative 2. So that's the quickest way. Um, so negative 2 divided by itself is just positive 1. So we get x, and 10 divided by negative 2 is negative 5. Now, because I've divided both sides by a negative, as we learned again up here, dividing both sides of an inequality by a negative number changes the direction of the inequality, so we go like that. So that's fine. Um, you may prefer to write it as x like that. So x, <clears throat> you know, conventionally it's always typically written on the left. So x is, so this thing is bigger, so this should still be trying to eat the negative 5. Okay, so good. And moving on, x divided by negative 3 is greater than 15. So again, like if we were to solve an equation like this, we can do that, right? We got to do the opposite of dividing both sides by negative 3. So what would we do in that case? We would multiply both sides by negative 3. Negative 3 divided by itself on the left is just positive 1. And then we've got x is equal to negative 45. Now, with the inequality, we will have basically the same kind of setup. It'll be x something negative 45. But because here, uh, because I multiplied both sides by a negative number, that changes the direction on that. So we should flip that sign. So it should be facing toward uh, the right now instead. So it would prefer to eat the thing on the right. Okay, a few more. Um, 5 minus 2x is less than 13. So, uh, I mean, there's always a couple ways that you can solve this. So let's do, so I'm going to do this. Suppose I'm sort of uncomfortable with this whole uh, dividing by a negative number or multiplying by a negative number. Um, so I'm going to try to find a way to solve this without having to keep track of the direction change. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go with 5, so just the original equation or inequality rather. Okay, and I can sort of anticipate that I would have to divide both sides by negative 2 if I brought this 5 over to the right. So rather than do that, I'm going to add 2x to both sides. So if I'm just adding and subtracting things, um, I don't need to really keep track of the direction change here. So negative 2x plus 2x on the left is 0, so 5 remains. And then on the right, I've got 2x plus 13, or 13 plus 2x, so I'll do 2x plus 13. Okay, and now i got to get rid of the 13 here. So get rid of that 13 on both sides, do the opposite of adding 13, right? And then 13 minus itself is 0 on the right, so what remains is just 2x. And 5 subtract 13 is negative 8, right? So negative 8. We're preserving this direction because I haven't been dividing anything by a negative number, right? I'm just adding negative 13 or subtracting 13, if you, if you like. Okay, and then the last step, still not dividing or multiplying by a negative number. This is just positive 2. So divide both sides by positive 2. And that finally gets me to uh, negative 4 and x. So x is greater than negative 4. Right, so it's preferring to eat the x and then I just rewrote it, so it's still preferring to eat the x. Okay, um, so that's one way to do it. Let's try another approach. So this time I'm going to just deal with it. I know, I can see I've got a negative 2 here, so I just accept that I have to divide by 
um, a negative number eventually. So I'm going to keep the 2x, the negative 2x on the left side. So I'm going to get rid of the 5 here. So I do that. And what's next? So 5 subtract itself is 0. I get negative 2x on the left. 13 minus 5 is 8. Okay. And now I just need to get rid of this negative 2. So notice I preserve the direction here because I'm just subtracting 5. That doesn't switch the direction of this. Now my next step, however, because I'm dividing by negative 2, will flip the direction of this sign. So at my next step, I will have negative 2 divided by negative 2. So that's just positive 1. So I have x. 8 divided by negative 2 is negative 4. And because at this step I divided by a negative number, the direction of this needs to change. So x is greater than negative 4. So notice I got the same solution, just using a slightly different method. So sometimes if you prefer you know, one over the other, um, it might, you might find it easier to do one way or another. But basically, there's usually more than uh, one way to do a question. So let me just resize that. Okay, yeah, more than one way to do it typically. Okay, moving on. And again, so this time I'm just gonna do sort of like what I did here. I'm just gonna accept that I eventually need to divide by a negative number, so I'll keep the x's on the left. But, I mean, you can do it this way, this type of way instead. You can add 4x to both sides here if you want. That way you don't have to, you know, remember to flip the sign. So let's just, we're going to deal with the fact that we are dividing by a negative number. So I'm going to subtract 8 from both sides. So that'll give me negative 4x greater than or equal to negative 8 subtract 8 is negative 16. Oh, there should be an x there, negative 4x, greater than or equal to negative 16. And if I want to get x on its own here, I need to divide both sides by negative 4. Keeping in mind that with this division of a negative number, I need to switch the direction of the inequality. So negative 4 divided by negative 4 is just positive 1. Negative 16 divided by negative 4 is positive 4. And the direction of this needs to change. So x is less than or equal to 4. OK. And last one here on this page. 3x plus 8 is less than 8x subtract 12. So a couple different ways you can do it, as usual. Um, maybe I'll just give you a couple here. So. 3x plus 8 is less than 8x minus 12. So the first way I'm going to do it, I'm going to try to avoid multiplying or dividing anything by a negative number. So in order for me to do that, I'm going to make it so that the coefficient next to the x is positive. So at the moment, both of these are positive. If I brought the 8x to this side, I would end up with negative 5x on the left. And then I'd have to eventually probably divide by negative 5. So rather than do that, I'm going to bring this 3x to the right. So if I do 8x minus 3x, that gives me positive 5x. So that means I don't have to divide by a negative. So I get x, uh, 8 is less than 5x subtract 12. And then, uh, OK. Here we go. Get rid of this 12. So the negative 12, I add 12 to both sides. That's the opposite of subtracting 12. So then I get uh, 8 plus 12 is 20, less than 5x. And finally, I just need to divide both sides by positive 5. Divide by a positive 5. So if I'm dividing by a positive, I don't need to worry about changing the direction of this inequality. 20 divided by 5 is 4, so x is greater than 4, right? It's the, This is tending to eat the x, so x greater than 4. Okay, so that's one way to do it. And 
So if you prefer the other way, so let's maybe bring the x's to the left. So we have 3x plus 8 less than 8x minus 12. So first step, I need to bring all the x's to the left. So subtract 8x, subtract 8x. So because I'm just subtracting, I don't need to flip this sign just yet. So 3 minus 8 is negative 5x plus 8 less than negative 12. Okay, so now at least we've got all the x's to one side. So probably makes sense to bring all the numbers to the other. I need to subtract 8 from both sides. Because I'm just subtracting, this direction gets preserved. So negative 5x. 8 subtract 8 is 0. Negative 12 subtract 8 is negative 20. So we have there. And finally, divide both sides by negative 5. Now, with this division of a negative number, what do I need to do to the direction of the inequality? It needs to change. So negative 5 divided by negative 5 is positive 1. Negative 20 divided by negative 5 is 4. And again, because I've divided both sides by a negative number, this direction needs to flip. So x is greater than 4. So again, we get the same result um, just with different approaches. So pick whatever you prefer. Um, you know, sometimes it helps to be flexible. You know, if there's just no way that you can wrap your head around this direction change, there's often ways that you can um, work around it and just keep the direction the same throughout. So as long as you are not dividing or multiplying both sides of the equation by a negative number, you don't have to worry about the direction change, right? But sometimes you'll find it quicker, like this one, um, if you just keep that on the same side. Because if I were to, in this example, bring the 4x, negative 4x over here, it basically just adds a step. So sort of didn't do it that question. Okay, so um, a few more. It is generally helpful to do any simplifications, I guess, or distributions. Distributions or simplifications. To each side separately if you can before you proceed to solve. In the problems that follow, the variable may be buried inside a set of brackets, show, so we should simplify. Simplify things first before we continue. Again, we should always work toward getting all the numbers to one side and all the letters to the other side of the equation using opposite or inverse operations. So helpful to do bed mass, but backwards. So bed mass we use to evaluate expressions. Samdeb is often helpful to solve equations. So we're trying to figure out what should be in place of a variable. So it's kind of, it's a reconstruction. So it's sort of undoing um, the order of operations, if you like. That's not perfect, but anyways. Okay, um, graph each expression. So x is greater than one third. We have a graph here. There's one, there's negative one. So going from zero to one is split up into three equal pieces. So that would be one third, that would be two thirds, and that would be three thirds, four thirds, five thirds, so on. So if we're going one third, we're there, and we need to be greater than one third, so greater than lives to the right. So that's what our graph should look like. And we are not including, so if it was greater than or equal to, we would obviously fill this circle, but it is just greater than, so we leave this circle unfilled. Okay, next, x is, we can take this sort of piece by piece, so x is greater than negative 3, so we're here. 
we leave it unfilled because it's just a greater than symbol. And x is also less than or equal to 2. So it looks like we'll just maybe have to add something there. So there's a 2. Um, so there we go. That's the sort of upper bound. So x needs to be to the left of 2. But it can also be equal to 2. So we can fill this circle. And anything in this region. So we can be to the right of negative 3, but not including negative 3. And we can be to the left of 2, including 2. Okay, a few more examples. Here we go. So just want to get x on its own and upstairs. So what can we do for this first one? If you are not super psyched on this fraction, we can get rid of the 5 right away in the denominator by multiplying both sides of this equation by 5. So when I do that, to the left, it needs to hit both terms in there, and this needs to hit the 4. So 5 times 2 is 10, and 5 times 4 fifths, so if you like 5 over 1 times negative 4 over 5, that would be negative 20 over 5, which is just negative 4. So notice when I multiply by 5, it just got rid of there. So I'm going to just have the thing in the numerator. And then that's less than or equal to, or just less than 20. OK, uh, let's get x on its own now. So it's nice that we've gotten rid of the fraction here. Um, let's subtract 10 from both sides. That does not cause a direction change, so that negative 4x is less than 10. And last step here, I need to divide both sides by negative 4. Keep in mind when I do that, it switches the direction because dividing by a negative number switches the direction. So we would have then finally x something 10 over 4 negative 10 over 4, try to write that better, a little more space, negative 10 over 4, but I guess it would come from 10 over negative 4, so we'll just deal with that for a moment. So x, so it was sort of eating the right side, so when we divide by the negative, it needs to now eat the left side, and we can simplify this a little bit. 10 over 4, both divisible by 2. So x will be greater than negative 5 halves. Final answer. OK, um, on to the next one. We have uh, the x is inside a set of brackets. So what we can do is just distribute this 3 into each thing. So um, 3 times 2x plus 4 is like having three lots of 2x plus 4, right? 2x plus 4, 2x plus 4, 2x plus 4. So if we add that three times, I've got 4, 8, 12 singles, and I've got 2, 4, 6 x's. Or more simply, if we distribute 3 times 2x is 6x, we'll do that in a different color pen. 3 times 2x is 6x, 3 times 4 is 12, so notice that's consistent, and then greater than or equal to 7. So now let's get x on its own, get rid of the 12. How do I do that? Subtract 12, both sides. 12 minus itself is 0, so on the left I have just 6x remaining, and 7 subtract 12 is negative 5, so greater than or equal to negative 5. The direction stays the same because I've just subtracted. If I were dividing or multiplying by this number, the direction would change, but I haven't done that, so keep it the same. And finally, I can divide both sides by positive 6. So, whoop, what's going on there? Ah! <laughs> divide by positive 6. Divide by positive 6. That keeps the direction preserved because it's dividing just by positive. 6 divided by 6 is 1, so we got x 
is greater than or equal to negative 5 over 6. Final answer. Okay, uh, this next one. So a couple different ways we could do it. You may recognize that I could actually start by dividing this whole thing by 3, and that would be a little bit simpler. Um, but your sort of first instinct might be just to distribute each of those together. So let's go ahead and do that. So that would be negative 15x subtract 6 is less than 3x plus 15. Okay, uh, bring all the x's to one side, bring all the numbers to the other. So depending on what you choose, your approach will be slightly different. Um, so I'm just going to bring all the x's to the left. So let's subtract 3x from both sides. So that'll give me then negative 18x subtract 6 is less than positive 15 direction preserved because I just subtracted. Next, I'm going to get rid of the 6, negative 6 from the left. So I need to do the opposite of subtracting 6 to both sides. So I get negative 18x is less than 15 plus 6 is 21. And finally, I need to divide both sides by negative 18. Negative 18. So keeping in mind, when I divide by a negative, this direction changes. So I'll get x something 21 over negative 18. So direction change means it's got to go that way now. Okay, and both divisible by 3, 21 over 18. 21 divided by 3 is 7. 18 divided by 3 is 6, so and it, keep in mind it's a negative, so x is greater than negative 7 over 6. Okay, and moving on. 1.2 times x minus 2, so I can start by distributing that in there. So I get 1.2x minus 2.4 equals 0.8x. Um, so I'm going to go with, uh, okay, but it's just an equal sign here, so it doesn't really, doesn't really affect my decision. So I might have preferred to bring this 0.8 over here if I didn't want to deal with the direction change, but obviously I don't need to do that with an equation. So let's do that, just because that was kind of my first... Uh, instinct 1.2 minus 0 0.8 is 0 0.4 0 0.4 x minus 2.4 and what's left on the on the right side so it's 0 okay and get rid of this 2.4 add 2.4 to both sides giving me 0 0.4 x equals 2.4 and finally, divide both sides by 0.4. Divide by 0.4. So finally, here we go. X is equal to 6. So that was kind of different. You didn't have to deal with any inequality. Um, there you go. Okay, final example. The cost of running a baseball tournament is $1,000. Spectators are charged $8 a ticket. How many tickets can be sold to make a profit of more than $800? Write an inequality to express this scenario and solve. So, how many tickets? Let's call that X. So, X is the number of tickets. Now, um, if it costs a hundred or sorry, a thousand dollars to run the tournament, if zero spectators showed up we would be a thousand dollars in debt. So zero spectators, we would be a thousand dollars in the hole. Um, let's suppose we had 
one spectator. So what would that be? 1,000 subtract 8. That would be 992 in the whole. So 1,000 subtract 8, right? And then keep the sign of the larger, negative 992. Okay, um, if we had two spectators, we would have gained $16 in ticket price. That would be what? 984. So yeah, 16, if you add 16 to that, that'll get you 2000 negative. So notice each time we're adding a spectator, we're multiplying by eight. So it's like eight times zero, eight times one, eight times two. And we want it to be more than $800. So we want this sum to be greater than 800. So we could go negative 1,000 plus 8x needs to be greater than 800. Um, so now I just need to solve for x. So it says solve. So I can add a thousand to both sides of this equation. So 8x is going to be greater than 1800. And next I need to divide both sides by positive 8. 8 divided by 8 is just 1. 1800 divided by 8 is 225. So I need more than 225 tickets to be sold to make more than $800 in profit. Okay, um, so that's it for the day. I'll get you to do these questions in your booklet. And once you're done those, you can take a crack at the assignment, um, which will be based on these questions. Okay, so yeah, that's it for me for today. See you next time.